Good morning from the platform of IIT Bombay X. I welcome you all for the second face-to-face -face interaction. We would be talking about group discussions and interview skills, but before we really move on to that, let me just ask you for a commitment that we are going to have for the next four and a half hours. This is our short-term goal. But even before that, let me wish you all a very happy and engaging morning. This group discussion and interview skills. For this, we all of the students, they are normally petrified. You would have had several questions in your hearts when you walked into your centers for this interaction. So before we really start interacting, let me ask you for a brief exercise. Hilai, good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. How is the morning there? Mumbai has a beautiful morning today. Well, it's beautiful over here. Oh, lovely. And uh, students are still coming. A lot of number is there. Uh, we have arranged in two classrooms. Uh -huh. One is here, mm -hmm. uh, nearly a capacity of 40. And the other is uh, in the seminar hall, which mm -hmm. is having up to 250 capacity. Man. Okay, lovely. So we are going to wait. But you know what? That gives me an excellent opportunity to talk about yeah. chronomics, about being late a little bit. So these things yeah. would definitely matter. Madam, please. Good morning, madam. This is a course coordinator from Bilai Institute of Technology, RCID 1166. Oh, lovely. May I know your name, please? Myself, Professor Dr. Arpana Raval. Oh, wow. Dr. Raval, it's a pleasure interacting with your group. We'll move to some other center and wish them a very and happy morning. Was... Shola Bush. Very happy morning. Good morning, madam. I'm Professor Lobo, LMRJ. I'm coordinator for this particular workshop and we have a very good response for uh, soft skill workshop. Almost 1137 students are have enrolled. Oh, lovely. So we are, uh, yeah, we have almost six venues and all the venues are as full as you can see. Oh, well. Welcome, yes. and I, I look forward to a very engaging discussion today. Yes, all are enthusiastic well, to interact with you. Yes. <laughs> lovely. So, since I see so many people out there, we will begin this session from Shola for itself. You all must have come up with several queries in your mind, the students. So, before we really move on to those questions, I want you to do a simple exercise for me. I would want all the students to take a deep breath and feel themselves within. They don't have to think about anything right now because they do have their questions in their mind. So this is a simple exercise which I want every student at all the remote centers to do for me today. On the call of one, we shall take a deep breath and then exhale all our anxiety out. So, three, two, one. Take another deep breath, inhale, and then exhale your anxiety out. Why did I ask you to do this? Will come as we progress in the session. But before we really begin, since we have such a fantastic gathering out there, may I ask you all, what are the queries that you are looking forward to? What are the queries that have bugged you for all these time? Students. Ma'am, the first query that I, that came into my mind is uh, that uh, right now uh, the meditation, uh, it's a practice of meditation that you uh, gave us right now. So how it helps us uh, directly uh, for the whole session as we are uh, moving towards, uh, it's, it's a whole day session. So how it helps us right now? Can I take the question a little later? Or do you want me to answer right now? It's up to okay. you. You can... Okay, yes. okay, let's take it this way. I shall come back to it again. Let's take it this way. When you breathe in, you are at peace with yourself. And then perhaps in the middle of group discussion, you have suddenly lost thread and you do not know what to say. When you breathe in, it hydrates you. The air gets into you. That deep breath would help you organize your thoughts over there. And this becomes very helpful in your interviews because when you breathe in, you take some time and in that particular three seconds, four seconds, you can actually come up with an answer. And that is why I said I'll take this question a little later. Students, please tell me, the moment you hear about group discussion, what comes to your mind? 
uh, when we talk about the group discussion mm -hmm. the first thing that came into my mind is uh, we need to come to a solution of a problem or a topic what has been given to us in such a way that uh, all the members should agree upon at a situation mm -hmm. and uh, it would be a healthy discussion uh, that comes in my mind okay even before you go for that group discussion what is the psychology what is your behavior pattern how do you feel mm, the first thing i feel is that uh, when whenever we'll be starting so uh, the whatever uh, discussion would be will be going on uh, afterwards the topic should be clear first of all so that each and every person uh, should understand that and along with that uh, one thing is that sometimes some people speak and some pe uh, some uh, members do not speak so that should not be done uh, so that comes in my mind is there an anxiety any kind of fear Yes, ma'am. Uh, definitely, when uh, it's a competition kind of thing, uh, then uh, where GD is as as a as we take as a competition, so there is a some part in our uh, mind that uh, whether we'll lose or whether we'll win. For that reason, we'll have an, an anxiety. Otherwise, as a personally, I, as I am interested in GD, so definitely uh, that anxiety uh, will be overcome by my uh, confidence. So, uh, but. Yes, uh, some kind of anxiety is there definitely. May I ask some other students also to share their uh, feelings about GD immediately before they walk? Good morning, ma'am. I personally think that one should not go on rattling the points. Mm -hmm. uh, there should be a key point mm -hmm. which must be given for the topic and let the other members speak about it. So okay. that others also get the chance of speaking and not only the one person is going on rattling the points. And the another point which I think is important is that listening. Listening is very important in group discussion. Uh, are we a keen listener? Are we giving a patient listening to the other? That is very important, ma'am. Thank you and very many much. many such key points. Thank you very much. Lovely Thank points. You, Lovely points that have come to our place. We'll now go to some other center. Hello. Good morning. Hello, good morning, ma'am. This is RCID 1192. Lovely. Lovely to see so many people around. So, yeah, what it's I nice in interacting with you. Thank you so much. We are looking forward towards a fruitful and engaging discussion. So, may I now ask the yes, students so. about their feelings immediately before they walk into a group discussion. So, will the students please share their view on it? Before they go for the group discussion, they have fear in their mind that would they able to communicate well in English. Okay. That's the first point that they uh, In English. They face. In English. Are you highlighting in English? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. Yeah. So please let the students talk about it. May I request you uh, to let so the students... So us, they are very eager to interact with you. Thank Some you. of our students, right? Thank okay. you so much. Over to you. Good morning, ma'am. So my question is, what type of attitude and communication skill is required for while appearing for the group discussion? Over to you, ma'am. Thank you very much. What type of communication skill is required when you interact in group discussion is one of the questions which has been asked from one of the centers, MGM Nandev. Well, communication skills is extremely important. But when we talk about communication skills in GD, we also mention we, that content is very important. So, there are times when you may not be able to put your points in the language required, which is more or less always English. So you should have, if I am connecting with the remote centers and if, those, if the students feel that they can communicate better in some other language, personally, I would say it is all right. But you know what happens when you are trying to communicate in other language, maybe there are people from different states they will not understand your language. It could be that the moderator may not understand the language you are most comfortable in. So what I would like to say at this point in time is try to talk, bring out the content clearly, forget the grammatical errors that you may feel seeps into your language while communicating. And you know, we do not hire only for multinationals. We do not look for jobs only in the metropolitan, where English is a very important language because we have people from all over the place. We hire for other places also. If you feel that you have a very good knowledge on that particular subject, it is only the communication, it is only the language which is inhibiting you and the rest of the people in your group would understand your language. You may first 
excuse yourself, seek their permission, and then go ahead with your point. Is that okay? Does that suffice you? Yes. Okay, you know what happens? Yes, yes. If you do not talk, as it is, you are not going to get any marks, right? Yes, ma'am. You are not going to get any marks. Yes, yes. So it is good to risk this particular thing. Now it would depend on the selection panel, how they go about it. And many a times it so happens that if they feel that you have an urge for learning, it's only that there are some uh, certain things which needs to be improved in your English. But you have a sound knowledge of the subject. You have shown a logical progress throughout the GD. This will not inhibit them from selecting you. So you must always take a chance. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Sure. Thank, thank you. you. Yes, you? thank you. Hello, ma'am. Yeah. We have director with us, Dr. Latka, ma'am. Mm -hmm. She she wanted to interact with you. Oh yeah, sure. Please over to her, ma'am. Please, please. Yeah. I just wanted to request you to give some tips about how to open and how to close the GD. Okay, yes, we okay. will definitely take care of it. But before we really move on to this particular thing, let me just tell you one thing. Our students, when they walk in for a GD, there are three or four emotions they go through. They fear it first and foremost. They fear it a lot because they feel if they have somebody who can outsmart them, who is a better speaker in the group, the chances are nil. Please do not go in with that particular emotion. There are so many things which matter in a GD. And you must have gone through my slides. We have mentioned everything. So even if, you're, if you feel that your communication skills isn't that great, it should not stop you from talking in a GD. The fear of anxiety, if you're anxious, the fear of depression, it sets you know, the onset of, the, of this feeling, whether I would get in, how would I fare there? All these things should not matter to you once you know that you are going for a GD in the next 10 minutes. Over there, what matters is breathe in, calm yourself completely and wait for the topic to be given. Right? Why? Because they do not conduct a GD to eliminate you. They even the people who are there, they want to know what exactly and how exactly you proceed in communication, in a group communication. They would like to know what your body language is, how you would interact in a group. It is a process to initiate you into group dynamics. So always be aware of the group. You know, we immediately wish to plunge the moment the moderator says, at the moment it is said that the group discussion is now to begin. We just want to plunge into the group discussion, thinking the initiator will give us, initiating the group discussion will give us brownie points or will make us the leader of the group. It doesn't happen that way. So what needs to be done over there is walk into it. When you know the GD topic, just think what all points can you talk about. Take a note of what all points you could talk. It always helps to have a notepad. They may or may not provide you with a notepad out there. So it always helps to have a notepad handy and a pen handy with you. Go there. Now I'm going to give you, as you said, give us something how to open a GD. So it is the job of the initiator, but you do not know who the initiator is out there. Anybody could be an initiator. To be an initiator, what needs to be done is try to get the essence of the topic. So if I say hard work versus smart work, or if I give you the topic red, how would you go about it? Students, there is a formula, P-E-S-T-L-E. -E. I repeat, P-E-S-T-L-E, -E. pestle, the mortar and pestle. So you need to go there. And you need to get the juices extracted from the GD. So what is this special concept? P stands for politics or political. E would stand for economics. S would stand for social. T would stand for technology. I am sure most of you are technology experts. Now there would be technology experts. So T would stand for technology. P E S T political economic, social, 
technological and then we come to the legal aspect of thing and post that we come to the environmental aspect of thing. I'll give you an example out here. We keep on getting abstract topics. So let us suppose I give you a topic, red. How would you go about it? Let's move to some of the centers. How do we go about it? Good morning, Knowledge Institute, Tamil Nadu. Good morning. How is the morning there? I hope it is not raining. It is sunny day here. Oh, lovely, lovely. As bright as your Hello. smiles, as bright as the smiles of our students here. So we were just talking about the petal style of GD, how we should interact in a GD, how we should get points in a GD. So I said, pestle would give you an idea as to how to go about where P stood for political, social, political, economic, social, technological, legal and environmental. So now if I give the topic red to you, can we have a couple of answers? How would you tackle the GD topic red? Maybe have the students talking about it. Yeah, good morning, ma'am. Good morning. May I know your name, please? I am Javed. Javed, lovely, lovely. So tell me, Javed, if you have to talk about red, abstract topic red, what would you do? About the danger, I will take uh, the environment issues. Okay. I will talk about the negative points. If you yes. had to initiate, what and would you do? I will just talk about the love of the nature. Oh, lovely. Love comes in various shades, right, students? The red rose. How many of you get roses on the Valentine? I'm okay. not in the public. They're not they're, in the public. They okay. keep it in the personal. Okay, okay. So over a cup of coffee sometime. So, <laughs> so red is definitely. So what we do, may I request another student to throw some more light on it? Javed, you did an excellent job. Wonderful. Thank you. May I have another student talking about red? Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, dear. What's your name? Gautama Priya. Gautama Priya. Lovely Gautama Priya. So, could you throw Thank some you. more light on red? I'll uh, talk about traffic lights. Oh, lovely. So, that's, the a, tec that's a technological situation. thing. Lovely. And what else? So, I think the topic will a bit change the scenario of GD. I hope, ma'am, because taking this traffic light will change the scenario because he will talk about the nature's love and something. So it will give a different dimension for the GD. So it is also a starting point, I, I hope. Beautiful. This is such a fantastic explanation. Gautama Priya just now said that Javed had talked about love. Javed had talked about danger. So now when she brings in the traffic lights, this would give a different dimension to the GD. This is how we progress in a GD. The initiator's task is to present a wholesome description of what the word is. The ambit around which we could discuss the particular word or the topic. So if I say bullet trains in India, so it would be the initiator's job to define what bullet train is and what could be a couple of, not all, a couple of ramifications which he thinks are important in this process. But explaining the concept of bullet train becomes very important here. The initiator's job is to introduce the topic and then perhaps a couple of points, not more, because you cannot let the card open. You won't have anything else to say later. So the initiator does the introduction in such a way that every member of the group understands the topic. That is how we'll begin any topic. Now, it is not necessary that if one person has initiated, he becomes the initiator. It could just be that we have been given a topic read and we are going to discuss this topic. I feel it symbolizes love. Someone else would come over. Another person perhaps would introduce it as we have given, we have been given the word red, which has several ramifications. And we can explore, when we sit to explore an abstract topic, we can get into so many directions. It could be political, it could be economic, it could be technological. So we have a lot of uh, things to talk about the topic red. I personally feel 
Red is a sign of love. Now, what happens in this case? Students, let me remind you, we are in a college to corporate program. In a college to corporate program, while we are readying you to do well in your selection process, we are also trying to prepare you to do well when you join the corporate world, when you join your jobs. So the second kind of initiation invites people into the group discussion. And that is the kind of initiation we look forward to. We would be taking questions. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, dear. So do you have any question for us? Yes, ma'am. I have one question. Uh -huh. Ma'am, always before going to GD, I have one question in my mind. Mm -hmm. That uh, in a GD, if I've uh, stated some uh, positive points later on, can I add negative points to that point or uh, uh, to that topic? Lovely, dear. Lovely, dear. Let me repeat the question for the rest of the centers too. So if you begin, if in a GD, you begin at a positive note, can you shift to negative notes later? This is the question raised by one of the remote centers. Before I answer this question, I would like to ask the lovely lady, what do you think? I think we can discuss both the points. At, as in GD, uh, it's a general discussion, so we, uh, we should include both the sides of that topic. But uh, earlier in, uh, in one GD, I had included that, so some of my uh, fellow participants uh, had objection about that, so I have doubts about it. Friends, very early, you know, in my slides, I had mentioned that GD is not a debate. In a debate, we need to take sides, and then switching over is not possible. But a GD is not a debate. It is just how you make that switch that would make a difference. So I had mentioned that if you have talked about points which you felt were right in the beginning of the discussion, forget about the positive and the negative. Now think that you can make a switch or rather you feel that whatever you said perhaps needs some change, some attitudinal shift. So you could always say perhaps I took a micro view of the situation. Looking at it from this angle, it felt that this is possible. Now looking at after the discussion, I feel that we can go about it in this manner too. And then what you should do is there must have been something which has brought that change in you, that attitudinal change in you. So mention that particular point and expand on it. So now what happens? The other members as well as the moderator would feel that she is flexible. There is flexibility. She's not rigid. So that works well for you. And then what you've done, you have talked about those points, you have developed those points, so that comes as a team player. So have I answered your question, dear? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Pleasure, dear. Any other question from your center right now? Yes, ma'am. I also have a question. Basically, when we participate in a GD, uh, it's like more of discussion of members. Like uh, we don't get a chance. Like we can't cut the points of others. So how effectively we must uh, put put forth the points so that we get a chance to speak uh, in a right manner means we should not cut the points of others. That is what my question is, like how we should effectively get a chance to speak. Lovely. I'm sure you would not face that problem. You have such good communication skills, dear. So you've just asked the question, how should we state a point when we are not getting a chance? We are trying our level best, but we are not getting a chance to interact or to present our points. Is, am I right? Is that what you yes, wish? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So, you know what? A group discussion is a place where we share ideas, we explore ideas. And we can only explore ideas when we bring them on the table. So it is extremely important for everybody to make their presence felt, to bring out, contribute to the group discussion. It does happen especially when it is for the selection process, that there may be, in a group of six or eight, there may be two or four people who would dominate the group discussion. And others may be trying to get into it, but because of the assertion or aggressive nature of the group, of those team members, they find it difficult. They are conditioned, they are conditioned 
by the sense of modalities. Over there, what you should do is you should start raising your hands. You should start raising your hands and your body language should be, you know, forward, leaning forward. You should just say, may I? Don't think about the modalities, about rudeness, about anything because your good behavior, your listening skills, nothing would get you a point out there because for listening skills also, you need to have active participation. So it is important that you participate, no matter how. So when you raise your hand and you raise your pitch a little bit, may I, I have something really important to say. So for a moment, everybody would be taken aback. Now here, there is a play. What happens is, while some team members would be like, you know, this would be the expression. Some would be like, go ahead. All these expressions of other team members are working for you. Because in a group discussion for selection process, the moderator is not just watching for content, that is knowledge, or your communication skills. He's also watching you for your body language. And if they're still not giving it to you, you could just shout at the top of your voice and say, I have, you could, I mean, I, would, I wouldn't mind you, you know, just thumping the desk a bit and say, please give me a chance. Because eventually, if you don't speak, you don't fare well. You, do, you are nowhere. So once you have got the chance, you should speak sense. You must have all the points that you had wanted to say. So over there, the trick lies in putting your point forward and then perhaps building up if you are in consonance, in agreement with someone else's point also. You can build up on that other person's point as well. So here what happens, the moderator gets to know that even in a very aggressive group, overzealous group, let me say, aggressive is not the right word, overzealous group, you can make your presence felt, you talk sense, and at the same time, by building upon other people's concept, you prove yourself to be a team player. Okay, dear? Do I satisfy? Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Pleasure, dear. Yeah, Pleasure. yeah, sure, ma'am. Pleasure, dear. Thank you so much. Best of wishes. <laughs> well, let's move on to some other center. Shastra University. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, good morning. How's the morning there? It's very pleasant here. Oh, lovely. Mumbai too, you know, we have a sunny weather outside after some long spell of rain. We had rains yesterday night, so now it's pleasant. Oh, lovely, lovely. Any questions for us? Okay, uh, I have a question, ma'am. In a group discussion, say if uh, all the participants are trying to act as a uh, leader after the initiator have presented the idea or the topic of group discussion, mm -hmm. how do you think it should proceed? Uh, the question asked by Shastra University is, if in a group discussion, post the ini initiator has introduced the topic, everyone tries to be a leader, how should the group discussion progress? Well, let me go back to the same center first. You tell me who is a leader, who emerges as a leader, and what in your context. You may have had mock uh, GDs, you may have faced some of the GDs, so where did you think the leadership qualities lay? After the initiator has uh, introduced the topic, the mm -hmm. group discussion proceeds on uh, as planned without any conflicts or something like that. Mm -hmm. Say for example, you have a topic which is prone to conflict like political topics or something like that. Right. Uh, a leader uh, whose sole role which I think is that uh, the aim of the group discussion should be fulfilled. That is, a conclusion should be drawn in the end uh, without digressing from the actual topic of the group discussion. So any leader who is uh, acting as a leader without being appointed should ensure that there is no digression or there is no conflict. I mean, in the sense, it should not turn into a debate. I feel that this is one of the roles a leader should have. So you have just said that for the role of the leader, he should be able to see that the topic, the uh, GD, the discussion doesn't digress and everybody should participate in it. Do I get it right? Yes, ma'am. So, yes, ma so right. if everybody in that particular group is behaving in that manner, I think kudos to that group. There have been instances, friends, when students have come up to me and said, 
oh, we had such a fantastic group discussion. I made in 10 minutes, I had made seven points, but we did not get selected. And there have been occasions when people have come and said, you know what, ma'am, we did not got selected. And that entire group, that particular company walked in and they took the entire group away. Do you know what may have happened out there? Everybody out there was not a leader. Everybody out there was a team player. And they were donning the role of a leader as and when necessary. You need to have a leader. There emerges a leader when perhaps we have a conflict in personalities and viewpoints. At young age, there is a conflict in personality. Later, in the corporate, we choose to believe that there is a conflict in viewpoints. Over there, somebody who himself has knowledge of the subject, who has credibility, established his credibility, who can see that every participant gets a chance to speak and who performs very well in dealing with hostilities, will become a leader. The real test of a leader comes when there are hostile opinions in the group. So if I give you a topic which is very controversial, over there, perhaps we may have political people from several political leanings and it would get the GD may not be able to maintain its decorum. Over there, if somebody is able to bring them on the same page with com conflicting opinions and yet on the same page, bringing out their points, exploring the points, that person would emerge as a leader. And we have one more question to be posted. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, Joe. Um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, suppose during a, during a group discussion, right. if say, uh, example me, I'm I, okay, I'm going for the interview and the round two, it's GD. Mm -hmm. So uh, what if I don't know any point, like I'm not able to do uh, well, not even well, I don't know anything about that because say, I, I'm not a good follower of the newspaper, it's about current affairs. So I don't know anything, what should I do? Like, should I just be open and say I don't know anything about this? Or should I just struggle and you know, stagnate on the point and uh, try to say at least something? What's your opinion, ma'am? I would say if you do not talk, you do not get, you do not score, right? Okay, so uh, how to proceed? Like, I don't know anything about that. Should I just uh, say, yeah, this is good, this is good, like that or? In okay, what let, way? Me, let me repeat the question for the benefit of other test centers also. We've just had a question from one of our remote centers saying, if we do not know anything in a GD, how should we proceed? Should we just keep on nodding, saying, yeah, that's good, that's fair, or should we not say anything? Since you are all technical graduates, I presume. It's a technical institute, right? It's a technical institute. Uh, I didn't get to all of your engineers out there, yeah, budding engineers, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so all of you are budding engineers. So what happens when you are given a topic, try to link it to at least one of the concepts in the PESIL formula. Always bear in mind the PESIL formula. Have you watched that formula which I gave earlier in the session clear to you all? P -E -E. Yes, ma'am. P-E-S-T-L-E. So, P-E-S-T-L-E. Yes, right? Yes, the PESIL formula. So no matter what the topic is, you may not know anything about the topic. And there always are six to eight people in a GD, right? So do not rush to make a point. Wait for the initiator to introduce the topic, okay? Now let us suppose the topic doesn't get cleared in the initiator's initiation, introduction. That means that the initiator has not done his job properly. Wait for the second person to talk about it. If that person also doesn't talk anything about it, you know what? Rather than keeping quiet, raise your, again, raise your voice and say, uh, may I request you all for a proper introduction? May I request you to let me know a little more about the topic? Could it be on these terms? So apply your creativity and ingenuity and just throw it on them, could it have a political impact or could it have? So you would get the lineage, you would get which side this topic is moving. So if it is finance, so you could just say, what are the financial applications or implications? Could you give me a history about it? So there definitely would be some people, okay, you do not know, okay, fine, the history is this, this, this. So you have given, you are given some background, provided some background, by one of the people. So this initiation you shall have to ask.
okay so when nobody knows anything when somebody does not know anything in the group discussion it is important that the person asks because in that case it is the initiator who has faltered the role of an initiator in a group discussion is extremely important and therefore do not rush thinking it is going to get you brownie points please the initiator it it lies on the initiator that he presents a wholesome idea about what the topic is please do not keep quiet maybe you will make your entry you will be the last one to make an entry maybe some people have started repeating their points by then you may have gathered certain things and you have kept quiet all these long so you could just again raise your pitch and say may i i do have i think i do have some brilliant ideas now please give me a cup a minute or maybe 60 seconds to talk about this particular thing so now that you have specified and you have not spoken for all those time you know they would be they, they shall have to give you that particular time to talk students the bottom line always is in a group discussion you have to participate if you do not participate as it is you are not there so why not try hard okay the thing is many of my uh, seniors they have uh, just come from the gd dis the group discussion and said i i did extremely well and all those stuff but unfortunately they don't end up in the selection panel what are the reasons ma'am we think that we've done well uh, i guess you've probably discussed this before but what are the reasons ma'am that we think we've done well but just that we don't make it through the selection panel what is the reason uh, the question just asked was that we feel the students feel that they have done extremely well in the gd and they don't end up being selected what could be the reason behind it so it happened i'm going to cite a personal example at the institute i teach uh at it itself so we were just introducing and we had some very good students so they just came over and post my session on group discussion they just came over and said ma'am you i think we did extremely well in a gd and yet we did not get selected so i said okay fine let's have a gd right now so we had a group of students over there and the peer group was recording them so it was a mock gd we did it as it is done in the selection process so once it was over i did not give any opinion i asked the peer group to talk about them so what came across was that all those people who did not get selected but they thought that they did extremely well in their gds were people who were very aggressive they wouldn't let other people talk not just that what would happen is they would be in their own stream of thought these are the points i have noted down p e s t l e so for every uh, acronym letter in the acronym i have noted one point and i have to say i am not going to build up on anyone else's point there may be other people doing the same thing in the gd so what is happening are we having a wholesome discussion out there no there may be someone else who may have made three entries in a 10 minute gd he may have come up with two solid points and in third entry his point may not have been a major one but what he did was he built up and gave an internal summary of what was happening out there not only that what he may have done is when he was about to end his discussion or rather his point he may have focused on that team member who had not got a chance to speak then and these people who have been over zealous may have not watched his body language and you know taken that snatch that time time out from there so what happens is if we are looking for a team we wouldn't want such aggressive people in our team we are looking for people who have the intelligent quotient and the emotional quotient as well so what i would suggest is you know when you prepare for your gd for the selection process always go for a mock gd and have yourself recorded when you go back to those recordings you will realize what behavioral changes you need to make over there the tone the aggression that keeps in when somebody rebuts a point or somebody builds a point in direct contrast to yours so that facial expression and then you would realize why you have not been why you need to go for uh, another group discussion does that suffice you am i clear Uh, yes, ma'am, you are. Right. Any other question? Ma'am, one more question, please. Yes. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Ma'am, I have a question. Yes. Suppose in a GD, yes. 
someone per, another person actually say something about a topic mm-hmm. but uh, my uh, my views are totally opposite of what he says mm-hmm. how can i actually uh, interrogate him and, and say my points are right over here what you need to do is it would depend on your personality one thing you could say oh that's a very interesting point that you've made but i beg to differ my view point is this 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 so you do you think we can do a round about and go tangent about this particular issue should we think about this particular issue from this point of view as well you know what happens we are very straight forward so when we are straight forward we tend to make groups within the group discussion rather than doing that try to use the models should you would you shall we you know so introduce your sentences or your point of view from this point okay this is not a debate as i have previously said in a group discussion there has to be conflicting views unless and until we have con- uh, conflicting views unless and until we have brainstorming we cannot do well in a group discussion and there is always place for conflicting views because it is only then the leader will emerge he will collate everything he will try to bring everything on the platform you will churn you will explore what you have been doing all the points and then perhaps you will come to a conclusion if we go about it in black and white we cannot have a fruitful gd it's just the way you would oppose a particular point it is not opposing it is bringing in a new point okay and it should always be done thank you ma'am thank you do i satisfy your answer question yeah lovely shall we go to some other center please kerala god's own country god god's own world good morning good morning good morning dear good morning how yeah. is kerala this morning no. okay let's go to the question what i want to ask is during gd we use body language like uh, moving your hands like this and that so is it good or bad the question you asked was question you asked was is it okay for us to gesticulate in a gd is that it yes okay it's absolutely all right to gesticulate in the gd till the time you do not bang the desk a throttle somebody okay you don't need to throttle somebody you don't need to bang the desk but when you gesticulate when you lean forward when you look into the eye of the people and talk it shows that you are an engaged participant but a lot of gesticulation there are some people who would go ahead doing this this you know what this is what happens and you know we need to do this about uh, it so when the gesticulation is more than the point when the gesticulation is more than what you are saying got my point right then it is so we need to gesticulate less not much but we must use our hands because many a times they speak more than us they deliver our passion they deliver our commitment especially in a selection process if we are using our hands okay not in the aggressive manner but in order to make our points you know it shows the engagement level of the person now let us suppose this is a this is a kind of group discussion and i make myself comfortable like this and i don't use my hands i don't use my eyes i start looking down and i start talking to you do you feel it is right do you feel that we have the kind of passion we have the kind of energy level that is required for a gd out there no so that is why body language believe me for an interview skills or a group discussion your body language is a very important aspect so if watching over you are three people in a group discussion believe me there would be one who would be watching you for body language and therefore appropriate use of your eye contact your nods when you are in concurrence with somebody's point all these things would matter in a group discussion any question good morning ma'am fair lady what's the name my name is minnu simon lovely miss simon please go ahead uh, when we are participating in a group discussion mm-hmm. uh, what are the important points to be remembered when we are concluding a group discussion you know uh, there are two ways some companies would give every person every participant a chance to summarize while some would ask for the conclusion per se wherein only one person just as there is one initiator there would be one person who would conclude so when you conclude 
whatever has been said, you present a brief summary of that. In your group discussion, you may be tempted to add a point, but please do not do so. Because the conclusion is a place where you summarize whatever has gone by in, say, quick 40 seconds to a minute. Okay? Now, if you are given a chance, if every single person is given a chance to talk, that person should also talk about what the conclusion has been in a GD. Let us suppose in a GD you have not reached at a conclusion. And you are not supposed, it is not mandatory that you need to come to a conclusion. Some volatile, politically volatile topics, some social topics, they may not even, some abstract topic, they may not warrant a conclusion. So don't ever go to a GD thinking, oh, we need to have a conclusion and don't ever come back feeling let down that we did not have a conclusion, right? But the conflicting views which were presented, were they resolved towards the end? And if, if they were not resolved, that needs to form the basis of your conclusion, okay? Thank you, ma'am. Does that satisfy you? Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Ma'am, my question is, like, if I feel that the, the initiator has uh, misinterpreted the topic, uh -huh. what are we supposed to do as a participant? Okay, if you feel, now, let me first address the word misinterpreted, okay? So, yes, there could be a chance that the topic had to be conducted in a different manner. You felt that it had to be conducted in a different manner. But the initiator presented his own interpretation. So what you could do is, you could, whenever you get the chance, you could be the second person and you could say, oh yes, I think that could be a C. If it has a bearing, if that particular explanation has a bearing, you could say that, okay, that could be an interesting uh, way to move forward in a GD, but uh, we can also explore the GD in this particular manner. So now what you have done is, you have given the group two dimensions. Now let us suppose that the group felt that the first initiator, that the first explanation was a misinterpretation, they will go ahead with your interpretation. But it could be that you may have interpreted it in a different manner. So now going by the group, you can talk about certain things. Here there is one more point. It could be that you have, it is not a misinterpretation, but you have a different point of view. You thought that the topic has been so framed that it can have that interpretation also. So in that case, when you have spoken about it with concrete points and why you wish to talk about that particular topic in that particular manner. Now let us suppose the group doesn't go by your way or it doesn't go by the other person's way. In that case, do not keep coming back to that particular point only. If you have more points to add to your viewpoint, only then come uh, into the GD and try taking it in a, to a different route. Otherwise, if you try to come back with the same point in a GD, you would be reiterating the same point and you would not let the GD move forward. Okay? Is that clear? One more question. Okay, just a minute. So we have right now addressed a question which said, what if the initiator, if one person in the group feels that the initiator has misinterpreted the topic, in that case, you can go ahead with your own viewpoint out there on the topic. That could be like a second initiation and the group may take whichever way it wants to go forward. Now, let us suppose the group takes your way forward. So now the correction has been made perhaps. If it does not feel that your interpretation is right, do not keep coming back with your point, the same point into the group all the time because you would create a vicious circle out there. If you still feel that your viewpoint is valid, come with stronger points, with facts, with figures, with quotes relevant to that topic so that you can mold the group's opinion towards your viewpoint. And now, we are going to take another question. Yes, dear. Kerala, welcome back. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Uh, can you tell us the pre-preparation for group discussion? I would say that we were. Do you read newspapers? Do you watch news? So before the selection process begins, be on the lookout for news 
be on the lookout for the newspapers apart from the books that you have to read. Another thing, this would be kind of, you know, a long term preparation. Well, students, I'll get back to this in a few minutes from now. We have Professor Fartak with us and he would like to address you all. So a very good morning to all of you. Once again, I note the great pleasure and pride that more than 19,000 students are enrolled for this soft skills course. I am also very happy to announce that IIT Bombay is designing and conducting this program in collaboration with a corporate house that I mentioned last time. Well, I can now indicate the corporate house. We are doing this course in collaboration with J.P. Morgan Chase. We are very happy to announce this collaboration. As the course unfolds further, I am sure that you will have more activities and uh, you will benefit much more, as I said, not only by attending these face-to-face -face sessions, but more so by actually carrying out activities at your own place, individually and in groups. I just wanted to take a few minutes to tell you how important the command on the language that you use for communication is. We use English as medium of instructions in most of our higher educational institutions. However, English is not the native language for most of us. By the way, like many of you, I also studied my own, I did my schooling in Hindi and I was not well versed with English when I joined college. I had a lot of difficulty in understanding the proper use of English for which I had to struggle a bit at the beginning. However, I have understood one thing. When people say that they have a weakness in English because it's a foreign language, the weakness is not because English is a foreign language. The weakness is because we have not trained our minds to be disciplined in use of any language. I would like to illustrate this with an experiment which I did when we were conducting MTech admissions not only based on the GATE score in our school of IT about 15 years ago, but based on GATE score plus internal tests. For the shortlisted candidates, I used to give a very simple question which said, describe you and your family in 20 sentences. When people answered that question, the next question on the next page was, Rewrite your answer in your mother tongue. Now, this is what we noticed consistently over four or five years. The people who wrote in poor English had also lot of mistakes when they wrote in their native language as well, which told me that people have not disciplined themselves to write correctly in their own language. If you have disciplined yourself to be very correct in the usage of your own language, believe me, you will intrinsically be careful while writing in any other language, including English. What is true for written language is also true for spoken language. We speak, but we rarely correct ourselves. We rarely note down our mistakes. This is where the group activity at your own colleges would help. I would sincerely request you to try and speak to each other in English, independent of the prevalent language in your region. I know, for example, that when I was studying my engineering in Indore, most of us used to speak in Hindi with each other outside the classroom. Some of us formed a group and said, we said to each other that we will practice speaking in English. And when we did that, we found out the errors that we were making, not because each individual speaker could find out one's own errors, but because others in the group were able to find errors. Often we were helped by faculty colleagues who went out of their way to correct our mistakes and to tell us what is the correct usage of any phrase and how to use those phrases in English. Why I say this is that going forward, as you know, the communication skills are intrinsic part and essential part of the soft skills. You will find the usefulness of your language skills even in the workplace communication. Indeed, good communication is actually almost always very important in all aspects of life, including your own activities. And therefore, 
you need to master the language that you are going to use. We have decided to introduce a course in basic English which will form a beginning part of the college to corporate program from next year onwards. This course we propose to put as a MOOCs course and it will be available free of cost to all participants. But we will insist that all participants in future should do this course first before joining the college to corporate program. I will not take much of your time because you have to have your tea break at 11 or we still have 7 minutes. So maybe I will go over to a few remote centers but before that I wanted to make uh, an announcement that I have decided to personally visit as many remote centers as possible. I am still drawing up a chart as to where to travel in the next one and a half months. It will be maybe Lucknow and Agra in the north or maybe Shastra University and Mefkosh Lank and some colleges in Tirunel Valley. I do not know really. But it's a much greater pleasure when I meet people face to face personally and physically. Of course, we are able to interact through this technology which is very useful. Uh, I will let the corresponding workshop coordinators know about my visits at least one week in advance and if you are free I will make these visits on the working days. If you are free I would be very happy to spend 20 minutes to half an hour personally interacting with you and to get a first hand feedback from you on this course. By the time I visit you the course would have been at least three weeks old which means you would have had a much better understanding of how this course is benefiting you and how you are working for this course. I will conclude by saying that I am extremely indebted to our corporate collaborators, Mrs. J.P. Morgan and Chase and my colleague faculty members in IIT Bombay as well as the large team which is working behind the scenes to make this interaction and the other activities of the course possible. Since we still have about five minutes for the break, let me just go over to one of the institutions, uh, preferably one which we had not uh, visited last time. We will go over to Gujarat, Sarvajanik College, that is Surat, right? Hello Surat, over to you. If you have any observation to make, please go ahead. Yes, I am giving mic to one of our students. Good morning, sir. Good morning, go ahead. Coming to the point, during go group discussion, for example, there are six members and three are discussing and three are silent. So, what to what should we do to bring the three silent to join the conversation? In the actual group discussion, you cannot do anything because it will all depend upon the individual initiative. But when you practice group discussion, it is important for the coordinating person to prod these three people and make sure that they speak. It is absolutely essential that this fear of speaking in a group is removed from everybody's mind. Please understand that a group is only as effective as the sum total of all individual members' contributions. So if three people are silent and only three people are participating, those three might appear to be noticed very prominently, but as a group, you would have failed completely. And that is the reason why you should use this opportunity to conduct mock group discussions in your own institutions. Anybody who is silent should be prodded to speak. In fact, it should be made obligatory. So one punishment which we used to have in my own communication skills course in such group discussion is that the people who are silent during group discussion are silently noted by me and my other colleague. And then we will make all these people make a public presentation for five minutes to the entire class. This is just to remove their fear of speaking. Please note that as individual students, including those who are introverts or shy, actually are as capable as any others. It is only that they have not discovered their own capability. Now, they will discover this and only when they are encouraged to speak. So, if I am a shy student in your group and you are very active and you notice that I am not speaking, you must say, Are Fatak Bol Kuch, say something. You should insist on me saying something. And if I don't say that, you give me a slap on the back like my teacher, Professor Isaac, used to give when we would not answer questions in the class. So don't let anybody remain silent. 
that is the joint responsibility of the entire group in my opinion thank you so much let's go over to one more institution before we break nk orchid college solapur boy this college also has a very large number of students very happy to see you over to you okay good morning sir good morning i am a coordinator for this college and uh, i'll leave it to the student who wants to ask a question yeah sure good morning sir good morning say i want to ask a question when you start a dd it most of the time turns into a debate so what are the key aspects that a dd doesn't turn into a debate very interesting question if it gets into a debate the debate may degenerate into sort of fights between two or three individuals so you must avoid that at all costs there is no standard method or a well worked out solution to this problem all individuals participating in the group must be aware of what is expected of each one of them but if say two people start getting into a debate of some kind the others must ask them to shut up first politely and then forcefully there is no other solution you see the group must take the responsibility jointly of disciplining itself unless you want the external observers to notice that as a group you have failed please remember that when you are assessed you are assessed not only individually but even collectively as a group so individually let us say a few students speak very well but they get into debating without permitting the other group members to participate in the group discussion then the external assessor will invariably note down that while individually some people have might have done well as a group you have failed and if it is a interview gd process for example the external assessor may simply fail the entire group independent of how forceful the individual debates have been so once again to conclude i will say that getting into debates individually and within two or three people in a group is a very bad habit it may happen however because some of us may feel so aggressive some of us might want to command the entire time and might want to push forward only our arguments it is only the collective wisdom that will prevail i would like to also advise those who are naturally aggressive in speaking and would like to put forward their point more forcefully than others to be very patient to be very polite and to be very humble it is the responsibility of every individual member of the group to ensure that not only he or she is able to speak his or her points but to make sure that all others get an equal opportunity to put forward their own points that's all i would say thank you sir thanks a lot thank you i think we are at 11 o'clock and i don't want to come between uh, you and the cup of tea so Uh, thank you so much over and out